Welcome to a special little episode of the Thunder Down Under, folks. We've got uh, Kyle's Corner where we're going to be breaking down some film, uh, or myself and Kyle are going to be breaking down some film. I'll be asking some questions. Kyle's going to be the master here. We're going to be looking at the Chargers or the new Chargers defensive front and what Staley's doing with some of these new key pieces. Kyle, how you going, man? Doing great, Jack. How you doing, buddy? Awesome, really good. Cannot wait to get stuck into this with you. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. Yeah, yeah, let's go. So the film that we're going to be looking at is basically going to be contrasting our Raiders matchup from week one to the week 18 matchup that we had last year. And for those of us that, you know, follow Bolts from the Blue or on that forum, I wrote a piece on breaking down our defensive issues that we had that kind of culminated culminated in that week 18 matchup and you could kind of see where a lot of our deficiencies were um, basically diving right into it these first two plays that we're going to look at are going to break down how the entire season could be broken down and it is an inefficiency when in our traditional nickel set and how what i like to call our light front when contrasted against staley's base defense by definition although we're only in it like 15% of the time, um, which he calls his tight front. So here we have the light front. This is a sub package. Um, this was, again, week 18. So you see Kaiser White playing uh, linebacker there. And we have our traditional, you know, two interior defensive linemen. We have our two edges. We have two linebackers. We have White and Murray on the field. So, and then three cornerbacks. So this is, again, a great example of how Staley likes to run his base nickel package is how I call it now, or the light front. And what was status quo for the year was just a complete inability to stop the run, especially when the run was, you know, geared towards the inside because we just didn't have enough meat in there. You know, Kaiser White on the lighter end of linebackers and Murray was not playing very aggressively. As you saw, he was seven yards off the ball there, and he never really came in to interact with the line. Both guards, or um, I, I, I didn't, I, I'm not going to back it up, but uh, two offensive linemen had a free run at both White and Murray and was able to wipe them out of the play. Easy, yard, easy gain, gain for the running back there. Um, contrast that against how Staley run, ran in his tight front where we have three interior defensive linemen, two edges. Now we're actually matching up like with a base defense. Uh, and we had a lot more success with that formation. Uh, it creates a lot more havoc. Uh, we're actually going to get the, um, get to see it from behind the line as well. Mm. So by having those, uh, interior defensive linemen lined up, you know, just a shade inside of the tackles and that four eye technique, um, it's creating a very difficult blocking assignment for the guards to get to them to double them. And if they do, it's going to create a hole for the linebackers to shoot that, or they're going to have to dedicate those guards to go up to the linebackers at the second level. And then the defensive interior guys are going to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup and hopefully be able to break it up pretty easily. So well, here, I, I really feel that, here you're asking the offensive line to make choices really quickly and you're putting the yeah. pressure back on them rather than just your your basic, your base defense. Definitely, you can definitely see that there. Yeah, and, and this was a great example of, you know, Kaiser White being in a good position to make a play, but it's not like he was a, you know, world-beating run defender here, mm. right? Like, like you said, this guy's the number 70, the right guard is going to make a, you know, create a double-team block on our nose tackle and then he's probably supposed to get to that second level but it's such a far way for him to go it naturally creates a gap for white to just go and explain that's right yeah and so that's when we did very well last year in that game the difference between the yardage that we gave up um in the light front or our base nickel and that tight front was staggering we were regularly giving up, um, I've got it right here. We were giving up less than two yards on average per play when in the tight formation and 6.8 yards when in the light formation. So it's That's huge. massive. That's huge. Yeah. Wow. And, 
Do you, can you imagine why that is, Jack? Do you have any idea of why that would be besides, like, number one, why we wouldn't run it more? And number two, there, there's no wrong answer here, man. I, 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 I can't really imagine why there was such a staggering difference there. I, I don't know. I mean, why why didn't he run that that three look more? I don't know. Maybe it's just because he just didn't have the cattle and it was just there would have been exposure across other parts of the field that he thought was more pressing. Um, and then maybe he sort of thought, he, well, we could sort of um, stick with the run up the middle and if we're getting gashed, we're getting gashed. At least we're not giving up touchdowns. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the what it would be. But yeah, that's huge. I mean, that's you know, that's that's four yards. That's that's first downs and everything. Yeah, man, that's massive. It's staggering. And when we were looking at running plays in particular, the tight formation was giving up less than 1.5 yards per rush play. and But our light formation was 8.47 yards given up. <laughs> it, was, it was brutal. Um, oh. So the good thing is when looking at, now we're looking at week one, uh, we've kept the tight formation in a lot of ways and we've expanded off of it and created some different unique looks um, in implementations of it, which is really interesting. And when we were in our strictly tight formation, and as I as I go through this, Jack, there's going to be a couple that look like a tight, but is a different personnel grouping. So I didn't include those in this data crunch. But when we were in our tight formation, we yardage was a little bit, we gave up a little bit more yards. We gave up 4.6 yards on average, but it's because of a Devontae Adams getting a one huge chunk play for 41 yards. So yeah. if we back that one play out where Asante Samuel did get beat, but that's going to happen against a world beater like Devontae Adams, that was nine plays that only gave up five yards. So it's the, the tail of the tape's not quite all the way there, you know, but um, it still was very successful the majority of the time. So running through it really quick with our new Chargers. Oh. It's frozen on us right now for some reason. Is it playing on your end, Jack? Uh, no, it isn't. It's uh, it might just need a little bit of a. Can you want me to try removing it and bringing it back up, or? Yeah, maybe. Let's see what let's see what we've done here. Okay, so. we we we've jetted back on. Here we go. Gentlemen, start your engines. Yeah, All right, maybe. here we go. All right. And that's the sack. That's what we like that's to see. Sack. Yeah. So we're in the tight front here. The exciting thing, too, is Staley has a lot more confidence in his defensive backs now. And this is without J.C. Jackson even. But he's still able to, you know, let Derwin come up and play that star role that Chris Harris was often playing last year and be more aggressive off the edge. Well, the difference between Chris Harris and Derwin is huge. The, just the physicality <laughs> alone. You know. Oh, yeah. Wow, wait, look at that. Um, and yeah, Carl, so can you... Can you sort of diagnose why we've got Bosa all of a sudden is lining up a little wider now as well, comparatively to last year? What, what would be the reason for that? So right there, I don't think he's lining up too much wider on this play. We, we did line up wide a lot last year as well, especially mm -hmm. when in this tight front, because we have um, our defensive interior guys on that four eye. Uh, Bosa doesn't want to be that much or that close to him, but in the base nickel, which is what we see a lot more of, uh, yeah. then he's lined up a lot closer to the tackle because they need to keep that box a little tight somehow. Mm. Uh, and really what it does is when we're in this tight front is it gives an opportunity for a lot of, like what you see with Khalil Mack right here and Bosa, they're going to get single man looks there. They're going to, yeah. it's going to be hard to double team them. And which makes, like you said, lining up wide like that just awesome. Yeah, it's uh, great to see. This play, another tight front formation, if, if I remember this one correctly. Yep. This is a culmination of everything that's gone right with our defense this year. You have Khalil Mack, just such an upgrade. Nuosu did great last year for who he is and um, what he was brought here to do. But you can't blame him for not being Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack brings an entirely different level of intensity and basically edge protection in run defense. So combine that with Kenneth Murray coming downhill way more effectively than he ever was last season, you're going to see a lot more plays like this. So Mack's going to come off the ball hard and get on the other side, sealing that edge of the tight end, but in true gap and a half fashion, 
forces the running back to cut inside and is going to be there to make the tackle when he does. I was going to say, it makes such a difference. And you're right, Uchenna Nwosu was great last year. Really good rushing the pass. So very athletic, but he just doesn't didn't have the experience that Mac has right there. As you said, seals that edge so, so wide, forces the running back to go inside. And he's slipping, yes, but we had tacklers there already. It's such a, such an upgrade, man. Mac's oh. having an amazing year already. Oh, yeah. And look how many guys we had around the ball. Just yeah. everyone's swarming in a, in a much more constructive manner. So yeah. it's great to see. Uh, one more with just our trad oh, oh, actually no sorry we're transitioning now so this is a not quite a tight front but it's what we talked about in one of our previous episodes Jack when we discussed what Kyle Van Noy can bring to the team here we have Rumpf actually on the edge on one side we have our three uh, interior defensive linemen and Kyle Van Noy is going to start as a linebacker and then he's going to drift up and kind of play a He's not going to quite go all the way to the edge because he's going to come in and do a stunt on the pass rush. But it's still providing unique, exotic looks for the offensive line, like you said, to kind of have to make a lot of quick decisions on that's going to lead to errors, uh, which is great and very exciting to see. It's a little weird that uh, Rumpf actually stays back and plays a little coverage. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, it's, don't, don't know if we want to be seeing that too often, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, my, not my favorite part of that play, but yeah. it is what it is. Uh, so here we go. We're going to be in another tight front look, but now, again, with the added skill and play of Callahan, JC, when JC is on the field, which he was not this game, Samuel is looking so much better because he understands this defense, in my opinion, a lot more now. Um, we have the flexibility to bring Derwin up in that this play, he's kind of, you know, playing that star DB role, but really he's the edge in a tight front formation here. He's playing where Mac or Bosa would traditionally be. And that's going to give an opportunity for him to read run, or if they want to do something exotic with the front, with everybody else, with the linebackers or D linemen, he is very capable of dropping back into coverage from there and not getting beat. But needless to say, they read the run, that just looks so much better than anything we did last year. You know, we didn't have this flexibility with Derwin last year because we had so many liabilities in coverage. Love it. Looks great. And that's right, is putting the pressure back on the off, the opposition offensive coordinator, putting the pressure on the quarterback, not being so predictable. And I think you, you touched on it right just before, Kyle, is that Callahan, Asante Samuel... A lot of our players now look decisive when they're playing. There, there are choices that are being made because they know that the other players uh, around them are going to be doing the thing that they're expecting, not uh, second guessing and trying to make a play all by themselves. They go, if I do my, if if I if I get my assignment right, someone else is going to make the tackle. Not I'm, I need to try and do everything. I think that's been a big shift as well. Love it. Awesome. Hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. So here we have another example of something that started as our light front, but with an air of aggression that Staley didn't have before. At the snap, Staley released Murray, which, like I said, with that first clip that we saw, Mur or Kaiser White was five, five yards off the ball, and Murray was seven yards off the ball. So by the time the running play took place, uh, those guys did not crash into the line. So two offensive linemen were able to come and completely wash them out of the play for a huge gain. Here, Staley is releasing Murray. I don't know if that's confidence in everything else that's going on with the DBs and whatnot and feeling like he can say, yeah, Murray, go get the ball carrier. But um, I'm seeing more and more Staley letting the linebackers go downhill for a running play. And a lot of times I, they're cued in to look at the running back and see, okay, if it is a pass play and you see that running back go to the flats, follow him. So it starts out as a run read. And as they get to the line of scrimmage, if that running back releases, there's a good chance that Murray is instructed here to dip off and, you know, peel off and cover that running back and make sure that, you know, he doesn't get a quick, easy outlet pass. So he crashes down into the line. You have three players clogging the inside of that line here, and you'll watch both Kenneth Murray play that gap-and-a-half scheme. That's very important when 
we're talking about Brandon Staley's defense, which is predicated on having more defensive backs on the field than what other teams would traditionally consider conventional. You know, when there's two wide receivers on the field, most coaches are going to want to have two cornerbacks. Staley's like, nah, give me three. And it means we have one less linebacker or one less lineman on the field. So if we're going to have that, we better have strong linemen that are able to take on more than just one assignment, hence the gap and a half technique. So here you see Kenneth Murray, right, is penetrating uh, the A gap on the left side of the center, but he's not going to penetrate it all the way. He's going to get to the gap, like what Staley's talked about time and time again, and he's going to give the running back a read that the other gap might be open. And as the running back tries to get to that, Kenneth is going to close that off. Austin Johnson, to the right of him, number 98, is going to do the same thing. He's going to be in one gap. The running back is going to say, oh, I can get to that other gap on the other side of AJ. And AJ is going to go, no, you can't. I'm coming across the body, baby, and that gap is closing. So right here, Kenneth Murray, to the right of him, you see that that gap looks like it's there, right? Mm. No. Kenneth Murray sh showed it, and then he closed it. Austin Johnson, same thing. Showed it, closed it, got him. So that's the goal of Staley's defense a lot of the time, is to force the running back to make a move in the backfield that is like a some sort of adjustment, finding a new hole as one closes, and it should buy defensive backs time to come downhill if the defensive lineman isn't the one that makes the play. But sometimes, you know, as you're seeing there, is we have better defensive linemen that are agile enough to penetrate to a gap, but also strong and quick enough to change direction and go across the lineman's body, Yeah, we're going to make plays. It's that, it's that power, isn't it? You know, you're, we're actually looking at you know, those, those big bodies that can not only, as you said, shift their feet, but shift the offensive lineman too. And, and mm -hmm. you're right, it's that synchronicity. Oh, that, what a great, that was a great breakdown there of Kenneth Murray and Austin Johnson opening but closing. And that's that synchronicity or that's that cohesion that we're looking for that we didn't have last year. It was, exactly. I'm just going to try, I'm going to try and do everything as, as I'm going to I'll, I'll try and rush the pass. Oh no, they're running. I'm going to try and make that tackle. And there were just holes everywhere. Awesome vision, Kyle. And, and you, what you also had a lot of was instead of Austin Johnson, you had number yeah. 99, Jerry Tillery on the ground. <laughs> so yeah. Just, yeah. I block. Yeah. Just one more time. Just that's, that is gap and a half play. That's Brandon Staley to a T. Um, I could I can watch that one all day, man. So <laughs> where it gets even crazier now, something that I never saw Brandon do last year, and I didn't break down every week as detailed as I did the Raiders game. I only got that deep into the weeds into about three or four games. But I never saw him do this. And it's a one interior defensive lineman look with um more with out of the dime formation essentially. So now we have six defensive backs. Um Derwin James is off often going to be brought up somewhere along the line of scrimmage for this because he's such a versatile tool here. Um, but watch how this plays out. You have Kyle Van Noy is basically lined up a yard off the line of scrimmage, but hovering in that four eye spot. And Drew Tranquil is on the line of scrimmage, also in that four eye. So it almost looks like a tight front, just with a slightly different look. And this creates a lot of different possibilities. Like you said before, Jack, like how can we make the offensive lineman, the center right now is making reads, right? Trying to guess where That's this wrong. blitz is coming from. Uh, which one of these guys is going to drop back in coverage? Which one, which one is going to blitz? The Both Drew Tranquil and Kyle Van Noy are athletic enough to get back and play zone coverage or, you know, rip into somebody. And Kyle Van Noy is going to sell a full body on the right-hand side Mm. Full body, just fake, not even a head fake, a whole body fake. And then yeah. he's going to rush in and just destroy this guard. Now, we're doing this with only one interior defensive lineman. But by bringing in Van Noy and Tranquil at the line of scrimmage pre-snap, it's going to free up Mac to have this uh, single blocking assignment with the tackle. And the right side is going to have three guys rushing in, Derwin, Bosa, and Kyle Van Noy, all on single assignments as well. So someone's going to get the car. Today, it was Mac. <laughs> so th exotic looks, man. I'm a huge fan. What would you think of that one, Jack? That's right. And if, if, if you went back there, you could see 
I always think when you're looking at offensive line and what they're trying to do is if you can see that their their feet and their body are going one way, but their head is looking another. And just if we at the left side of the film here, the guard, which would be the right guard, if you look at the, there was a point where his his body was going one way and his arms going one way and his head's popping another way. And so you're knowing that there's that confusion, there's that confusion going on, going, oh, what do I need to do here? That's exactly what we want to see. It's awesome. Yeah. And I love that that single defensive lineman. Even with that, they're still creating matchup problems because of that that pre-snap movement, the the little fakes, and you get you get that when you have someone like Van Noy. That's the experience you get of knowing how to manipulate um, offensive linemen's minds. Yeah, totally. And. And it feels like we haven't sacrificed that much strength from that video by pulling off the, the meat of our of our line. You know, we normally that creates a, a opportunity for them to just, you know, run down your throats. But with Drew and Kyle Van Noy there, I still feel like we're pretty secure. Um, so popping to the other video here, Jack, um, I had there's this is also that same look is how we decided to close the game down. The last two plays of the game were when we were in that kind of gadgety uh, defensive personnel package. So here, once again, one interior defensive lineman. We have Kyle Van Noy between, I believe, I can't tell if that's Fox from here or Bosa. Uh, mm -hmm. But so once again, Jack, we're bringing in four on that rush, and Kyle Van Noy looks like a pass rusher. That's going to free up Joey Bosa to have that single blocking assignment, that tackle mm -hmm. dedicated to him, and that guard is thinking, oh, I got to pick up Van Noy. But Van Noy is going to peel off and cover the running back. Yeah. So we only had a three-man rush, but it's basically as effective as a four-man in a sense in that you're getting at least Mac or Bosa uh, a single blocking assignment. One of them is going to get there. Both of them got a single blocking assignment that time, and Mac got home. And Bosa yeah. did. I, and ever, I think it's, it's, really important. it's really important, even though there's three rushing the offensive line clearly outnumbers the rushes, but we're still getting to the quarterback. That is good defensive scheming, 100%. And, and it just creates so much opportunity for our defensive backs to get picks, yeah. which they did that game. And then last one of that sequence, same sort of deal. Just we, uh, look at that. Yeah. That time we had four drop in, and we had, um, and just like you said, we didn't, we, we were creating blitz-like pressure with only three or four man rushes and we were able to bring in um extra dbs to create a double man assignment on both waller and Devonte there so great work by staley scheming away there I was a big fan of everything that happened in that sequence um now here was kind of a fun one in that I, I was a big proponent of our middle linebacker assignments are pretty easy. Uh, we don't need to go out and get like a, you know, a stud middle linebacker. We'll be, we'll be fine with what we have, but Staley, I still stand by that, but Staley is recognizing what he has with Drew Tranquil and letting him play to his strengths a little bit. Cause Drew is a guy that can flip his hips and get back in coverage. So watch this. This is another one where we're bringing our linemen up to the line of scrimmage and then making an adjustment post snap. So here, mm. this is very interesting, Jack, because we don't typically have our linebackers playing that far back. I was going to say, I, yeah. 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 Is, is this a three high look with a linebacker? What is this here? So what I'm seeing more and more of is Staley is trying to create opportunities for interceptions, it seems like. by you're, You'll notice that all of these defensive backs actually shaded the outside and try to push the action inside, right? Yes. Which a lot of times defensive backs will shade inside and try to force the wide receivers to the outside because it's easy, like it's a great pick opportunity in, in a one on one situation, you know? If it's a tough throw to make. Right? To, when, exactly. When you, when you push outside, you, you jump the routes, or if it's an underthrown ball, you've got it there. Yeah. Exactly. And that's how you get pick sixes, you know? Yeah. That's why like, guys like Aaron Rodgers knows. Hey, try not to make that throw unless you know you have it because it's the yeah. easiest pick six to make. Here, we're doing the opposite. We're sh shading outside and forcing them in, and both safeties came in to play like almost the middle of the field. They abandoned deep. So we're going to send them to a route. Almost did if 
inside here. I don't know if he had an option route, but you see D Derek Carr pump faked to him, and Nasir was there, ready to jump that route coming down. But he ended up pulling it back. Um, Derek Carr made the one throw that he could have made on this play. Sometimes good players make good plays, and Derek Carr's good. Maybe not great, but good. Um, and he did make the perfect throw to I forget what that what what his name is, but number it's Hollins. Hollins, um, yeah, Matt Collins, yeah. And Drew, but Drew was almost in position to make a pick, being somewhere that he normally is not. So how did that end up working out? Well, later in the game, very similar deal. It wasn't, you know, an at the line of scrimmage type play, but here we're showing that too high again, right? But um, towards the, uh, you, you see Nasir Adderley um, playing in that lower safety spot. He is going to shade Waller mm. to the inside again. And we're showing that this is a too high look. Derwin isn't coming across. When we have both of our guys drop back like that, Jack, a lot of times one of them comes up and plays like cover one man. And one covers that hook zone. And then one stays deep and covers, you know, the deep like center fielder type type role there here they kept derwin on you know his half of the field to help with uh Devante. and then nasir looks like his role was just to push waller inside with drew bailing to that seam that was going to be open in a traditional too high to bait into that but, throw yeah that's and and i get and i think i noted on a, a couple of weeks ago that the Raiders would look to really attack the same because the same because that's kind yeah. of a weakness in in Staley's defense. But I love that. What a great example of seeing that uh, that that tranquil opening his hips up, popping back, pushing back, and then bang right there. Look at that pick, <sighs> done. It's amazing. That's like if you study our defense, like you just said, Jack. That's not where he's supposed to be. That's not where he normally is. Staley knows that, and he's scheming around that now. He's getting creative and having fun with this team, which I love to see. So now just a couple other random observations. This is, again, the improvement of Murray and whether it is Staley having more confidence in the coverages, um, having more confidence in everyone else doing their job, or um, Murray himself having confidence that if it is a pass play, he's going to know to disengage the block, get off the pass rush, and get to that running back, or fully commit and get there before he's able to get the pass off. But mm. watch Murray just come downhill and blow up that freaking <laughs> guard, man. We never saw that last year. No, I, I feel like Staley has, is teaching him steps. So rather than trying to make him... Uh, try and make hundreds of, or not hundreds, but a lot of choices very quickly. He goes, okay, if this happens, then you do this. If this happens, you do that. And I feel like he's got a lot more confidence and he's playing far more aggressively because he, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's stepped in his teaching rather than going, if you see that, then there's this, this, then there's all these decisions that he's having to make. I feel like he's playing easier in some ways. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And in week 18, Jack, there was a time where we ran one T Tampa two, where that middle linebacker came back and played that deep center zone. Mm. It was, it, it was Murray instead of Drew Tranquil, and yeah, Murray's yeah. not the guy to do that. Drew, yeah, yeah. as you can see, is that guy. So he's definitely playing to his strengths a lot more. This is the one area of weakness he has that I. The one thing that I'm concerned about is. All of our linebackers, except for Drew, because I haven't seen him tested yet, still have trouble with this wheel route. Yeah. That is where Murray got burned on the PI last year. And you see here again, he's, very he's still playing the body. <laughs> so <laughs> he's not turning his head around. He's still yeah. playing the body. So that's the one area that we have a weakness on this defense that I'm curious to see how Staley builds off of it. Because we are leaving ourselves open to that again and again. That's where Kyle Van Noy allowed a touchdown as well. Um, and it's just, it's something to keep an eye out, out for. Um, so Jack, that's, that's the wrap up, man. That's, those are the things I saw. That's what got me real fired up for, um, you know, our defense moving forward. What, what do you think? What are your takeaways, man? Oh, fantastic. I, I think the biggest takeaway for me is actually seeing the, the footage. You set it up perfectly of watching, um, 
of watching Tranquil peel off into that, uh, in, into the middle of the field there. So deep. I, I hadn't realized how deep he was pushing back. And as you said, it's just Staley having fun. He's clearly had the time now to not only, I think we got to be really careful in saying that, oh, because we've got all these new players, uh, you know, he feels a lot more confident. Don't discount how good of a teacher Staley is as well and how mm -hmm. he's had a year and 12 months with these guys. He's been able to clean up his lines of communication. He's been able to clean up decision making. Um, and they just clearly have more confidence, which is absolutely wonderful. It seems to me that, I mean, listen, we haven't looked at any broken plays here other than that maybe that last one, that, that wheel route um, that Murray was looking at. But there's just confidence, there's decision, there's decisiveness, and I think it's great. You've, you've highlighted some really, really fantastic stuff. Over the middle interceptions is fascinating to see too. Um, mm -hmm. Let's hope we can get some of the Jags this week, man. Let's hope. So, hey, the thing that blows my mind too, Jack, is that when, and when, as I was watching this and breaking it down, there's many, many plays where you can tell the play is designed for – us to kind of like how, how I was showing Nasir seemed to be guiding Waller to that spot that he wanted Tranquil to get to. Staley is often scheming this as a man that played quarterback and is now a defensive coordinator schemes. He's giving looks for the quarterbacks and then bringing somebody sometimes from across the field to act on that look and that read. So I fully am bought in on those three picks being far more of a trend um, for the rest of the year than us having a no pick game, of course, because a lot of drops happened. But um, I think that's going to be closer to the norm than us being turnover deficient like we've been in the past. So a lot of reasons for optimism. I do believe we have a weaponized defense now, man. Love it. I love that. I love that. Weaponized defense. It's awesome. Um, th if that's all from you, Cole, I guess uh, we'll say goodbye. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Kyle, I know you're going to be putting this up on your Twitter and stuff. We can find you at the Kyle D on Twitter. Um, we've awesome working with you, man. And I can't wait maybe in a, in maybe, in maybe eight or nine games time, we look at this and how it's evolved as well, because there's going to clearly be some, you know, if we can see these tendencies on our, on our defense, then I'm sure offensive coordinators are going to be looking at us pretty closely and it'd be fascinating to see what Staley, um, adjusts, I guess. Totally, Jack. Totally. I can't wait, man. This will be something to look at week by week for me. I'm going to be nerding out. So I'm very excited. Awesome. Well, we got the Jags this week. Um, I can't wait. Hopefully we can see a couple of turnovers. Uh, just some sticky hands, please, please, please. Let's see. <laughs> I love I love to see a pick six as well. Anyway, that does it for us. Uh, this has been Kyle's Corner. Thank you so much again, Kyle. Awesome working with you. Um, love seeing this film break down. And uh, let's get it. Let's get it. I'll, we'll see you later. Later. Bye. Firing, he's got Floyd turning, got it, 6 and a 10, 5, high step, touchdown!